Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, July 25th, around 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. We're now at day 16 on the Reckianus Ridge Iceland eruption, and it's looking to be reducing in as far as lava flow. Most of the lava is now flowing underground and we have one small volcano spattering at the location. Keep calm, it's boom time. Severe storm slams the I-95 corridor from DC through Massachusetts. Look at that guy's face. Funnels, a funnel cloud was spotted in D.C. Damage reported in Brooklyn as severe storms sweep through the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. This was not a tornado, but it was a funnel cloud. Look at that. It didn't reach the ground, and it was right above the Capitol. Holy macaroni. Did you hear? 2023, the most large hail ever recorded in Colorado, as predicted. About seven or eight years ago, we began predicting that the largest hail would be falling upon us in the decades to come during the modern grand solar minimum. And the data shows that 2023 is the hailiest season on record in Colorado's history. So one of the states in the books. Did you see that? 892 severe thunderstorm warnings. Holy macaroni. And that brings us Great segue to severe weather could threaten Chicago area with storms possible on Wednesday. Here's the forecast. Hot temperatures in the southwest and central U.S. Severe thunderstorms in the northern plains and mid-Atlantic. Excessive heat warnings continue over parts of Arizona, Nevada, and Southern California with heat advisories scattered across the central U.S. The U.S., the core of these hot temperatures will shift to the eastern U.S. later this week. Scattered, severe wind and hail producing severe thunderstorms are possible across parts of the northern plains and the national capital region this afternoon and this evening. But those threats are now ending. There are some pop-up storms in the Delmarva all the way up, it looks like, through Connecticut. But in the next three hours, that will pass offshore. And we can get some pop-up storms here in Minnesota North and South Dakota say it ain't soda, but it's true. And let's move that through through tomorrow. The biggest threat this is the Upper Plains here. Chi-Town looks like Wisconsin and uh, Chicago, uh, Michigan are the biggest threat. We do have quite a few tropical systems meandering around here in the Atlantic. Here is Tropical Disturbance 3, which may make it all the way to Florida and Rafe up the coast. We're going to show you that in a moment. Tropical Disturbance 1 has 0% chance of doing anything. Tropical Disturbance 2 also low probability. But if we take a look at the GFS model, we move it through. Oh, let's move over here. Yeah, let's look at the GFS. Let's move it through and let's just bring it over here to, let's say... There it is. So this system is going to be coming up the first week of August, August 2nd and 3rd. It is now modeled to be moving towards Florida. Very low pressure system. This is a very severe, maybe Cat 2 storm. Could be Cat 1. And Rafe the coast here on August 5th and 6th. So this is a very far out model. But there, the sea surface temperatures are very conducive to make this happen. So we'll keep a close eye on this for you as we monitor Tropical Disturbance 3. Now, good news for the Four Corners region. Yeah, the monsoon is kicking in. And take a look at the entire west coast of Mexico, a deluge. And that's going to be pumping up tropical moisture into Arizona, into Utah, into Nevada, filling Lake Mead and Lake Powell. And while well, saturating Colorado. Excuse me there, I just sneezed. So take a look at that monsoon coming in. Coming in light here through the end of July, but once we hit August, it looks like it's coming in hard for the first week of August for the Four Corners. Good news, we need this moisture. There is a very high fire risk, and we could use one to six inches of rain. Violent storms tear through Europe with gargantuan hail in Italy. We've been reporting on this for weeks, and apparently Europe is taking quite, well, is taking the brunt of the summer and severe weather. 
A strong cold front is plowing into a record hot mass, unleashing severe weather in areas that have already seen severe weather. Silence are wearing. Look at, listen to that. Holy mackerel. Yeah, that's what a severe storm looks like. So have you noticed they're really overhyping weather these days? I have. Antarctic posts the coldest temperature since 2017. Polar fronts to battle to batter New Zealand and solar panel production produces more carbon than the IPCC claim. Scumbags. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Moderate rocker here, 5.5 in central Turkey. We are recovering from a 6 magnitude with some aftershocks, I think, in the Fiji region in the last 24 hours. But no one was affected by any of these quakes. So good news as we move over to the Worldwide Volcano News Update. Fuego, 16,000 feet, Semaru to 14,000. We've got Ubinas, Nevado de Ruiz, and Abico, and some new volcanoes you may never have heard of. Abico to 14,000, and take a look at this Dempo volcano in Indonesia to 17,000 feet. This volcano is typically exploding to VEI 0 and 1, small explosive activity, just like this time. Last time it erupted was 2009 over at Dempo. Fuego to 16,000, Santa Huito to 15,000, San Gay to 20,000, Sabancay to 23, Nevado de Ruiz to 23, Ubinas to 23, Uluan. Another eruption. Here is Ubinus' ongoing Vulcanian activity. Pretty spectacular. Spectamtacular. And we also can see here Marapi in Indonesia. Glowing rock falls continue. And a risk of dome collapse remains high. So stay away from Marapi. Quick visit over at the live stream here at Roof.is on day 16 of the Reykjanes Ridge. Volcanic eruptions looking like it may be coming to a close or entering another phase. So go check them out live. Give them a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel at Afar TV and tell them Diamond sent you. Space weather news update. We've had some low-level M-flare activity over the last 24 hours. Yes, we've had. In fact, we've had. But the big news is a major far side event and plus a fainter Earth-directed CME. A large Halo coronal mass ejection was observed leaving the sun during the past few hours, actually 24 hours ago. It looks to be related to a major far side solar event. It was so powerful that despite taking place on the other side of the sun, energetic proton levels streaming past Earth spiked almost to proton storm levels. Because it was far side, the CME is directed away from the planet and well, not a worry for us, but a faint CME was observed Sunday following a filament eruption and is predicted to reach Earth on the 27th in two days. And a minor G1 geomagnetic storm is forecast, as you can see here, just for three hours at G1. Hours of powers on the 27th, so stay tuned for the updates. Let's take a look at that far side CME, which is spectacular. It's not playing. The view here from Lasco C3 is pretty spectacular. We'll take a look. Look at it when it hits just on the timestamp. Look at that halo. Coronal mass ejection. Massive amounts of plasma heading the opposite direction of Earth on C3. We'll come take a quick look at here on slower motion on Lasco C2. And just boom, look at the scale of that. That is a fantastic explosion. Let's stop and just walk it through here. It's actually a little bit forward. See if we can just catch the moment right there. Look at that. See if we can walk that. Boom, look at how far it comes in one frame. We can even do that back here. Walk this back all the way back. We could suck that. Massive CME back in there. Oh, it's not letting us do it. All right, let's play it out. Here it comes. Look at that halo coronal mass ejection. If you've never seen a halo, now you know what a halo is in all directions. Uh, and if it was coming at Earth, that'd be hitting us. But in fact, it's going exactly in the opposite direction. So that's good news for us. 
Now, bad news. Gulfstream could collapse as early as 2025. Wow, this is the mainstream catching up with us. And this is bad news for all of humanity, especially Europe. The Gulfstream system could collapse as soon as 2025. And we're talking about the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. The shutting down of the vital ocean current called the AMOC would bring catastrophic climate impacts. The AMOC is already known to be at its weakest in 1,600 years owing to, its, to global heating and researchers spotting warning signs of a tipping point in 2021. But new analysis estimates a time scale for the collapse between 2025 and 2095 with a central estimate of 2050. And then they go on to talk about some nonsense about CO2 affecting this circulation, which it does not. There is a regular cycle on Earth of climate, and it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the sun. Now, Lee and I were away for a quick respite in the desert here, just a few hours to the west, where we visited Canyon of the Ancients and Mesa Verde National Park. And we've published several videos. Tomorrow, we will put the full video of Skull Castle Ruin in the Canyon of the Ancients. But please check out Mesa Verde National Park Tour, Spruce House, Petroglyph Point Trail, and many others, including Cliff House, the largest uh, cliff city known in North America. We would appreciate it. And also, come over to our channel, Magnetic Reversal News, and watch quite an amazing expose we put out before we left, Climate Alarmism Hysteria. The world is burning up. And share it with like-minded people that do not that are sick of the propaganda. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon, support the work we do. I'm exhausted. I've been driving and driving and driving for three days and baking in the sun. I need to go to bed. And that's a boom. We love you. Be safe. Mm -hmm.